Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be mastering the RFB DMR in Battlefield 4. We'll also be talking about general DMR tactics and a little bit about mouse sensitivity once again. I did a video on it recently, but uh, all my gameplay since then has been using my new sensitivity and I think it's really helped with my accuracy quite substantially. Now the RFB is actually one of the first DMRs you unlock in Battlefield 4 and when the game first came out I was not using DMRs because at the very start DMRs were pretty bad weapons. They've gotten a lot of updates since then and they're actually usable. I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. I think they're good for very specific situations but in most scenarios assault rifles usually outgun them or you're getting outplayed by bolt action rifles. So it's very hard to find that happy medium where the DMR is actually the best weapon of choice. Now playing here on Operation Locker is probably one of the least ideal situations to use this weapon so I'm just trying to be very campy with it, kind of peek out, take advantage of head glitch spots and just take care of people. I'm able to hold down this one area because frankly it's a pretty easy area to hold down. It's very hard for players to look from the inside outward on this map because everything gets so bright and so it gives me a slight visual advantage here plus I have my whole body behind cover. You just want to be careful not to get too close to your enemy or take them on in a straight up firefight in CQB because this gun for the most part requires three shots to take down your enemy. You mix a headshot in there and it's only two shots but when you're up against fully automatic weapons it doesn't stand a chance. Now switching over to Zavod 311 you'll notice I switched out my optic here because a four times scope seems to suit my longer range playstyle a little bit better. I could still make the red dot work probably just fine but red dot makes more sense if you know you're going to be getting a little bit more up close and personal. Four times works well, although I'm not crazy about the little triangle reticle in the center of the ACOG here. I end up switching to a different four times scope to try and be a little more accurate. Now stat wise it makes a lot of sense why they chose the RFB to be the beginning DMR because it's fairly middle of the line. It doesn't excel in any one department and it doesn't really lack in any one department either. Popping up the Simthic stats here we can get a better idea of how this weapon functions on a game design level. It has a 260 round per minute rate of fire very similar to a lot of other DMRs out there. They range from 260 all the way up to 333 rounds per minute with the SKS. Not a huge variation there but it can make a difference overall. It does 45 damage maximum and it drops off to 38. That means you're going to be doing a three shot kill both in close quarters and long range. The three shot kill never really changes. And you might be thinking, well, why even have a drop off overall if you're going to do a three shot kill no matter what the circumstance? Well, in close quarters, if somebody has, say, 10 damage done to them and you hit them twice, you will still get a kill even if you don't hit them in the body. So that's one of the benefits of the damage drop off. If your opponent already has damage done to them, then it actually can make a pretty big difference. And as you can see, I'm constantly adapting my optic to fit the situation at hand. A FLIR optic is great to deal with uh, people on servers that like to use a lot of smoke. But I gotta say, I really wish smoke was being used more as visual cover rather than a way to hide yourself while you shoot out of the smoke cloud with your uh, FLIR or infrared night vision optic. It would just be kind of cool if you could actually start using smoke grenades once again to actually push up through areas that didn't have a lot of cover in them. Kind of like how smoke is used in pretty much every other shooter out there, but whatever it is, just my personal preference on how I would like to see smoke being used in this game. Now I did say I was going to talk about my mouse sensitivity and I do want to mention just how that's been going for me so far. I basically reduced my sensitivity by half, meaning I need to move my mouse twice as far now to move the same amount of distance as I did before. This allows me to be a little bit more precise when zeroing in on targets. It certainly helps for watching very specific areas of the map. What it doesn't help with is whipping around quickly and uh, looking all over the place. However, as long as you control your situation and you're not jumping into the middle of like 50 guys and trying to win a firefight, then having higher sensitivity isn't really going to be something that is that important. Then again, your sensitivity preference is whatever works best for you, but I've been a high sensitivity player for a long time and recently am I starting to convert more to a low sensitivity and I have to say it's really helping out my playstyle. It does absolutely help though if you have the right kind of mouse pad. You need a large mouse pad so that you're not constantly lifting and dragging. If you have a low sensitivity and a small mouse pad, that's basically what you're going to get. You're going to spend a lot of your time with the mouse off the mouse pad 
just terrible for reaction time if you have to put your mouse back down and reacquire your target you're pretty much dead in that firefight now although i'm not a very good console gamer and i certainly don't spend a lot of time playing shooters on consoles i did at one point uh, watch a video where a fairly decent call of duty player was talking about playing on a very high sensitivity wanting to play at the highest sensitivity you possibly could and i just sort of took that to heart and felt like that was what you just had to do if you wanted to be a good player but uh, recently I've been reading up more on it and apparently a lot of the really hardcore pro players are playing on much lower sensitivities on console, around like 3 or 4 I think. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind if you're a console player. I can't give you a lot of advice in that department, but if you were like me and thought that high sensitivity was the only way to play on console, apparently a lot of people play on low sensitivity to be more precise. And it really is the sort of thing that varies from game to game. If you have a very fast paced arena shooter, some players might prefer high sensitivity so that you can whip around real quickly. But if you have a slightly slower paced tactical shooter where you need precise aiming and accuracy then lower sensitivity might suit you better. Now we'll say the four times optic on this gun is pretty nice and suitable for most situations except for extreme close quarters and it would be nice to have an optic that was a little bit more versatile and you might say well level cap why don't you just put the canted iron sights on there switch to canted iron sights when you need CQB. Well canted iron sights suck in this game they're incredibly hard to play with very hard to acquire your target with them. Iron sights in Battlefield have pretty much always been really poorly rendered and hard to shoot with. So I just don't like using iron sights in this game, especially not the canted iron sights. Battlefield Hardline did do the canted red dot sight, which was kind of cool, but still the field of view on that was so small that I found it mostly unusable, which is a shame because I feel like canted sights in real life are actually fairly usable if you practice with them. And we're nearing that 500th kill marker using the G18 as the sidearm because what the hell it is one of the best sidearms in the game. And uh, there we go, 500 kills right there, got the RFB mastery dog tag, and I don't know if I'll be using this DMR again. Its benefits are decent hip fire, but other than that it doesn't really have too much else going for it. I like the SKS because of its faster rate of fire ability to sort of spam fire targets and be a little bit more effective that way. But if I'm going for something that has better medium to long range potential, I'll take the Mark 11 Mod Zero over the RFB any day. It has a faster muzzle velocity, a faster reload, and it even has better aiming down sight accuracy. It doesn't have better hip fire, but who really cares about hip fire on a DMR? And if you want something that has a slightly higher rate of fire, the M39 EMR can do that, but it also has more recoil, so it's sort of a pro and con there. I think the Mark 11 Mod Zero is just a really solid choice when it comes to DMRs in general. It's not to say that the RFB is a totally ineffective weapon. As you can see from my footage here, I'm doing just fine with it, but as always, I'm looking for ways to improve my gameplay, be as effective as I possibly possibly can be, and if I were following that line of thought, I would definitely pick the Mark 11 over this. So anyway, that pretty much concludes this Weapon Mastery video. The RFB was the last DMR I had left on my list to master. Check the video description for a list of the remaining weapons, and leave me a comment letting me know which one you would like to see in the next Mastery video. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.